All right, good morning, Newington High School class of 2026 and new students. We have a couple people coming in right now. Welcome. It's early, I know it's still summer, but we're getting back into school mode. Just a quick reminder, everyone, hoods should be off right now. That's one of our school rules, so please, if you have your hood up, take it off. Cell phones need to be out of sight, out of mind. They need to be in your pockets. I don't want to see anyone staring down at their lap for the entire hour that in 15 minutes that we're in here, okay? That's another one of our school rules. So I'll give you a second right now. Put it into airplane mode, whatever you have to do. Get those cell phones away. All right, that should be enough time to put a phone away. We're going to get right into it this morning, you guys. Oops. So welcome to New Student Orientation. This is a program designed to provide you with information about all of the policies and procedures that we have here at Newington High School to help you become familiar with the building, our staff, and the different resources that we have, because our goal is obviously for you all to succeed. By the end of the day today, you'll be more knowledgeable about Newington High School and hopefully less anxious about starting your high school career. So again, I want to say welcome. And then now it is my distinct honor and pleasure to introduce the proud principal of Newington High School, Ms. Tara Tigno. Thank you, thank you. Good morning, everyone. How are we feeling? Uh, all right. I'm loud, so I'll just start off with that. And um, I know Ms. Blanchard already went over the rules with the phone, so we don't expect to see any um, out during this time. So I'm going to thank you ahead of time. And I also want to thank you for moving up so quickly. That was much appreciated. So um, as Ms. Blanchard said, we have some new students here, but we are also welcoming the class of 2026, which is very exciting. And you'll, you'll hear more about why I'm so excited to be uh, the proud principal, which I do say. So many things happen um, inside and outside these walls that our students and staff and community are, are a part of. And so that's why I always introduce myself as the proud principal, because I truly am. Today we welcome you as the class of 2026 and new students, and in just four years, we'll be in the same auditorium graduating the class of 2026. The four years go by fast, if you don't believe me, because I'm old, you can ask any of our seniors that are here today how quickly those four years go by. So today is the start of a new. Leave your past behind, you come in fresh, we come in wanting you, accepting you, looking forward to all the things that you're going to bring to NHS to make us even more special. All right, so three pictures. What are they about? The first one, family of learners. You're going to hear that motto a lot. This is my sixth year as principal, my 17th year as an administrator in this building. And when I started as principal, I wanted to come up with a, a motto that really explained what I believed in. I'm big on family. This place is an extension of my family. I think I'm here just as much as I am at my own home with my own children. And learners, we call ourselves lifelong learners, and you'll hear that from our staff as well. We're constantly learning from each other. We're constantly learning from our students. Um, and so we are a family of learners. The second picture, anyone want to take a guess at what that is? Well, it's me, good. <laughs> Anything else? It was me in high school. What you'll notice about me in high school was one, my hair, right? That was class of 1988. But what's even more special about that picture is that it was in the Newington High School yearbook. So what you'll find is there's a lot of staff here, including some of the people I'm going to introduce today, who graduated from Newington High School. I probably went to high school with some of your family members. So back in the day, our pictures were black and white. Now they're in color. So when you see our yearbook today, you're going to be really impressed about um, how well it's put together, basically. Um, 38 years ago, 
process that for a minute. I sat in the same auditorium as a freshman, excited, nervous, overwhelmed, anxious, all of the feelings that you're all feeling today. Totally normal. And so as the day goes on, I want you to take in everything you're learning. Look around. Don't look down at your phones. Talk to new people. When you're in the classrooms, ask questions. When you're asked to fill out a form, ask questions. Gentlemen, are we talking? So you can really get your experience starting today. The last picture, so one fun fact, graduate of 1988. The last picture is me in my office, and you're probably wondering, who cares? Or you're probably wondering, why did you put that picture up there? I put that picture up there because our offices are always open. So what does that mean? You should be able to come into any of mine or the assistant principal's offices at any time, make an appointment if we're not there, send an email, and we'd be happy to meet with you anytime about anything. If you're called down, you're not always in trouble, so please get that out of your head. All right, we want to get to know our students as individuals, and we welcome you into our offices. Fun fact number two, I have two daughters. One's a, senior, a rising senior, and one's going into eighth grade. So I am well aware of drama and moods and TikTok and Snapchat. And then I'm also not aware of a lot of the other social media platforms. But... What I know about social media platforms is as though they, although they are entertaining, they also cause big problems. And you're going to hear today from our SRO and some other people, hopefully, about not engaging in any activity that's going to make anybody feel uncomfortable. If you've done it in the past, now is the time to stop as welcoming and as loving and as caring as I am, and I hope you can get that feeling because I truly do love everybody in this building, we do not tolerate that kind of behavior. So I would just want to make sure that's perfectly clear before we move on. All right, and then the last thing that you need to know which is tied to that about myself is that I promote kindness. So you'll hear about our KISS mailbox. Kindness is something simple where you can submit something. Um, you'll hear about our safe boxes where you can um, put something anonymously in a box if you see or hear something that you want to report. So there's a lot of things. We do things. We post sticky notes on thousands of lockers to promote kindness. Student council, which you'll hear from later, will do activities throughout the year to help promote that as well. So we welcome activities. We support causes. We'll do heavenly hats. I think you did it in middle school because the high school is the one that started that district-wide. Pay a dollar to wear a baseball cap, which you're not allowed to wear during the day, or any kind of hat that you want that day, and that goes towards a cause. So we do a lot of things here at the high school to promote kindness. All right, next slide, please. All right, our team. So you can see we're fun up there. We've got some fun pictures, but this is our, uh, if you didn't know already, we have three floors in the high school, not four. Back in the day, there used to be a joke because this, these used to be numbered the 400s down here, so people thought we had four floors. Three floors, mainly by Alpha Split, and you'll hear more about that. Um, but on the first floor, we have Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris did not graduate from Newington High School, but he married a Newington High School graduate. So if your first name is mainly in the first half of the alphabet, you'll be on the first floor. The second floor is, Mick, oh, where is Mr. Harris? We want to give a wave back there in the back. You'll hear from here, him in a little bit. Nice. On the second floor, we have Mr. Ficcicelli. Over here to my right in the gray. Mr. Ficcicelli is a graduate of Newington High School. That's mainly the middle part of the alphabet. And then finally, you have Mrs. Blanchard on the third floor. <laughs> Mrs. Blanchard wishes she graduated from New England High School, but she graduated from Weathersfield High School, our big rival. So give it up for our, our APs, please. <laughs> All 
The house system allows one-stop shopping. What do I mean by that? If you go to Walmart, you can pretty much get anything you want, right? You can get clothes, you can get deodorant, you can get toothbrush, get all that stuff. So you should go into any house office, be able to ask any question, and get your questions answered right then and there. All right, next slide. I put this slide in last year because last year was the Olympics, but I thought I'd keep it in because I thought it really spoke to what we're looking here for the high school, what you can expect when you come in as freshmen or new students. Keeping an open mind. We want you to feel comfortable. We want you to be willing to consider new ideas. So again, keeping these themes in mind as you walk around the halls, especially today as you get started. Perseverant. Perseverance has been a word that's been used throughout the pandemic, especially with students, because you've been able to push through and get through things. And here we are today, in person, looking forward to another year. Collaborative. Anyone know what that means? Working together. Thank you. Yes. Working together. You're going to find that in your classes. If you're on a team and we, a club, we encourage you to get involved. You're going to do a lot of collaborative work. Self-aware. Be aware of your oneself and around you to help you navigate. And then risk taker, you'll hear that a lot as well. We ask our staff to take risks. Do something you've never done before. Try something. And then, of course, our team. What's FOL? All right. It was my first slide. It was a picture. Family of learners. Thank you. Yes. All right. Last slide. Before I turn it over, one more slide. All right. I started with this, so I'll end with it. Fresh start. Today is the day. Be able to budget your time. Seek out support and get involved. All of our speakers say, our adults, our students, you're going to hear, get involved, join a club. If someone's speaking and that sounds interesting to you, join it. You've never done it. Who cares? That's the way to get connected. 40, Mr. Meyer, 40 to 50 clubs we have. If you want to do something we don't have a club, you can get a group of friends, get an advisor, and start your own club. All right, so we really encourage you to get involved um, and be successful. Three questions and I'm done. Hold on. I need my pieces of paper over here. What year did I graduate? What's one fun fact about me? Raise your hand. Normally, we don't, I don't want you raising hands, but right now, I need uh, uh, I saw you first. I have two daughters, all right? And the last one. What was one of the themes on the Olympics? I saw your hand. What was it? Very good. All right, if you got a piece of paper at some point today, put your name, your T-shirt size, and whether you want gray, blue, or white, and uh, make sure you hand it to me at some point throughout the day. All right, next. It appears this group needs to work on transition. Do you know what that means? Between activities. So. I'm done. I'm now transitioning to Mr. Myers, Director of our Athletics and Student Activities, and Mr. Mateo. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tigno. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So, so Ms. Tigno is a great resource for you. Um, she leads our school. She keeps everybody engaged. And uh, the goal is this, folks. Stay involved with the school, and the school will give stuff back to you, right? So. What I want, well, you know, just from, from observing, one of the big things transitioning from middle school to high school, in middle school you try to, right, you try to, I'm seeing a lot around here, you were trying to impress the people around us, right? The goal of high school is impress yourself. Do things that are going to make you better. Do things that are going to improve upon who you are, right? Because soon you're going to be out of here, and whatever you learn from, take a part of, you're going to take with you. 
So my goal, obviously, is, is to get you engaged. We have our athletic department and our student activities. My goal for you is to get engaged. Find something that, one, you like, partake in it. Find stuff that you're not even sure if you like, and try it out. Uh, Ms. Tigno referenced it. We have over 50 clubs, right? So if you don't partake in any athletic program, find a club that you want to be a part of. Um, if you, again, have an interest, and you know you have 10 or 15 other friends that might have the same interest, Let's start a club that you guys want to follow. Find an advisor and come to me and I'll propose it for you. Um, so a few things that I'm here for, I just want to kind of run down some simple processes that we have for you um, and, and things that you just kind of want to stay engaged with. So in order to compete in one of our 27 athletic programs, okay, one, you have to be, you guys get a free pass to start. So you transition from middle school to high school, you're all academically eligible in the fall. So you can play a fall sport. Uh, football, and cheer, uh, football and boys golf have already started. You can still register for them. If you go to newingtonathletics.com, uh, there's a registration link. You can register. Okay? So you are all academically eligible to start. After the first term, you must pass at least four classes in order to be eligible. Okay? So that's extremely important for you to understand. You need to make sure you're doing your job in the classroom in order to participate athletically. Physical. Every time you go to the doctor to get a physical, get two copies. Bring one into the school nurse and keep one at home. Reason why I say that is if you, you, know, you lose one on your way to school, you misplace it, you have a second one. But every time you go to the doctor's office, get two, and the next day, bring it into the nurse's office. All right, this guarantees that you're staying updated so you'll be physically eligible every time we have a sport. Uh, the registration, as I mentioned, is on newingtonathletics.com, and we do have a participation fee of $100, right? Not much comparing you're here every day, and we offer a lot for you. Come back with me, folks. All right, now, if you participate in two sports, and you want to play three, your third sport is free, okay? So ways that you're going to find out information about the athletic department or our student activities and clubs. A big piece is our announcements. We have our announcement boards. We have our morning announcements that sometime we'll communicate information. Make sure you're staying engaged with those in the morning or as you're walking around looking in the cafeteria or one of the display boards as you're walking through the school. Make sure you're reading. This is where information will be. Before every season, we have meetings, right, for our athletic programs. We're going to give you everything you physically need to know, contact information, dates, uh, important things that you're going to have to have. Um, social media, we have a Facebook, uh, Newington Athletics. Um, Twitter is Newington Sports. Um, and then we use your student email. So when you register for your sport, that email address that you put in is going to be the email address we're going to use to communicate information. So make sure you're putting down the email address that you pay attention to. But the social media accounts, these are great ways that we just keep you involved, deadlines, dates, meetings, uh, but also information about your fellow student athletes and what they're doing day in and day out. Our website will provide you with any information you can imagine. It will answer many questions for you. Just make sure you're taking control of your decisions, right? You become big people now, right? High school, is, high school is young adult to grown up. So it is on you. You can't continue to rely on mom and dad, uncle and aunt, right, to do everything for you. You have to take control of your life and do the things that you need to do. So when you want to uh, register for a sport, find out what you need to do, go ahead and register for it, okay? It's on you to do this stuff. Um, our seasons. So... Like I mentioned, football and boys golf has already began. All our other sports will begin on the first day of school, right? They'll begin on the 25th. So you have to be registered by next Tuesday if you want to participate in them. So make sure if you're interested in a fall sport, you're going online, you're going to our registration page, you're getting your registration done, you're submitting your physical to the school nurse, and you're getting your participation fee in. On NewingtonAthletics.com, you'll have information for each one of our sports, so please just make sure you're paying attention to when your tryouts are, when, you know, uh, practices for freshmen are. There might be different times and dates for that stuff. 
All right, so please just make sure you are taking control of what you're doing. The winter and spring, winter, will, winter usually begins right around that worst week, first week of December, and then spring will begin in March. Again, we have meetings about a month prior, so just listen, just pay attention, and you'll be able to get all that information ahead of time. So before I turn it over to Haley and Lila, what I want to remind you folks, right, this is time for you to impress yourself. Get engaged. Do something different, right? If you have nothing to do in a particular season, try a sport. If you don't want to try a sport, find a club. Be a member of student council, right? Try to engage yourself with the school. Everything that you put in, right, is going to determine how much you get back. And in four years, don't go, man, I wish I, I wish I did, I wish I. Make sure you're taking advantage of it. Quickly before I go, so my name is Mr. Myers. If you come to the athletic office or call the athletic office, you're going to either get myself or you're going to get Mr. Mateo. Um, we're the two folks that are manning that office. If we can help you in any way, please make sure you stop down. It's room 120. So thank you all very much. I appreciate your attention. I look forward to you guys getting engaged. Thank you, thank you. And I'd now like to bring up Haley and Lila to talk a little bit about our field hockey program. Everybody. My name's Haley, and I'm going to be a senior on the field hockey team. <laughs> I'm Lila. I'm going to be a sophomore. And we're just here to talk about field hockey because we're always looking for new faces to join, and we have so much fun during the fall season that we think more people should be involved. Other than just our regular practices and games that we have, we are involved in many other things and do many other activities. And the pictures kind of show in the top Right here we have all of our neon socks that we're wearing as we run the Hartford 5K every year for an organization called the Achilles Foundation where we raise money for disabled athletes so they're able to run and continue their dream of running as well. Um, in the bottom left we have our pink out game along with many other sports. They all also have a pink out game but that's one of the more fun ones that we have where we dress in all pink or have pink pennies and pink face paint to wear during our games which is fun as well. And then in the bottom right, we have our annual car wash, which, again, a lot of the other sports do, but we have fun with it. All of us are drenched in this picture as we dump water on each other. And we honestly become best friends on the field hockey team. And everyone starts from a starting position. I only started playing in 7th or 8th grade. Lila, when did you start? I started freshman year. You don't need any experience to join the team, and it's just such a good team to join. Everyone's like a family, so... Highly recommend it. <laughs> yeah, so overall, don't worry if you don't have experience or have even ever heard of it. Um, we always welcome new people with open arms, and we have the most fun. We all become best friends with our group chats and pasta nights, and we're even planning a preseason sleepover. So it'll be super fun. So I'm going to introduce next Caitlin to talk about the color guard. Hey everyone, so my name is Caitlin, I am going to be a junior, and I am the captain of the color guard here at the Newington High School, and so I came here today just to talk about it. We are an amazing group with a big family who has so much fun, and we would love to see some of you guys come join us. We work very closely with the marching band, and you might be wondering what it even is. So color guard, if any of you have been to a home football game, we perform with the marching band during the halftime show. We spin flags and just have a lot of fun out there on the field. There is no experience required. You guys can even just come to a practice and just watch, try a few things out, see if it's for you. We would love to have anyone and everyone who can join. We have just an amazing group, and everyone will... It, whoa. <laughs> It makes the transition into high school a lot easier to know people, have people in the halls that you feel comfortable talking to. And if you have friends in the marching band, you'll get to see them as well with the time that we spend with everyone. Um, as you can see, right now we are a pretty small group. 
but we, that can change or we can keep it small depending on how many people join. We would love to just see anyone who can join come. So yeah, thank you. Oh. <laughs> uh, one last thing. If you want to get in contact with us, we have an email address shown at the bottom there. Uh, Newington High School Color Guard at gmail.com. And if email doesn't work, we have an Instagram at nhs.color uh, underscore guard. Yeah. Stuco. Good morning, class of 2026. So before I begin today, you'll notice that my hat is off and my phone is also off. Stay. So my name is James Michael Vendetti, but I know it's a mouthful, so you can call me Jimmy. This year I'll be your president of student council. I need this because it has the thing in it. Okay. Um, and you might be asking, what is student council? Well, it's a council of students. Um, all of you are going to have a homeroom this year with all your friends and stuff, and there's going to be representatives from each homeroom. Um, for, on the first couple of days of school, your homeroom teacher is going to ask, hey, who wants to be a Stuco rep? And all of you are going to raise your hand and say, me. Yeah. Anyways. Oh, shit. Uh. Oh. All right, let's take a second. Uh, anyways, so like I said, my name is James and Deddy. I will be your president this year. Your vice president this year is Eli Johnson. He is not here at the moment, unfortunately. Uh, our secretary is Lila Civitella. She's sitting right there. Raise your hand, Lila. Let's give a hand for Lila. Our treasurer this year is Simran Carr. Our social chairperson is Ava Tavares. And Newington is very lucky because we have two, uh, the students have two non-voting members of our Board of Ed, actually. Um, so our senior Board of Ed representative is Trisha Iyer this year. And our junior Board of Ed rep representative is Maggie Woods this year. So thank you to you guys. So we have two new advisors. Unfortunately, um, uh, Mrs. Morello and uh, Mr. Hartley are no longer going to be the advisors for next year. Thank you guys. I know you're not here right now, but I'm assuming you're seeing this. Um, so our, uh, our advisors for this year are Mrs. Klopfer and Mr. Barrow, uh, neither of which were able to make it today. However, they are amazing advisors, and they are awesome. Anyways. Yeah, thank you. All right, so why join Stuco? So I know you don't want to hear me talk, but I'm going to tell you why I joined Stuco. I joined Stuco because I wanted to get involved in my educational community. And Stuco offers that opportunity to everyone who joins. I also have an interest in politics, and, I, and that's what I mean to pursue. I'm going to be a senior, and after high school, I mean to pursue politics. So I think a nice way of getting involved is joining student council. Now, you might also think to yourself, what if I don't want to get involved in politics, or what if I'm not interested? Well, that's, that's OK. But it's also good to get some volunteer experience. Having some leadership experience is also good, too. And it's, oh, and it's fun to say sometimes, hey, I helped put homecoming together. Or, hey, I put together that pep rally or that spirit week or those decorations. Because you want a little bit of self-confidence. You know, self so student council is organized into several committees, and the committees then organize different events. So the two big ones are homecoming and spirit. Uh, and Spirit Committee. Spirit Committee handles the big events such as pep rallies, um, Spirit Week, et cetera, et cetera. Stuff that you would like going out, decorating the school um, for winter break, stuff like that. Homecoming obviously organizes homecoming. Um, we also have an administration committee which communicates with administration and our Board of Ed. Um, and we have a community outreach committee. So let's say you wanted to, I don't know, organize a community Cleanup of Mill Pond Park. The geese have been hitting it up again. I don't know, something like that. Or you want to put together a fundraiser because it's October and you want to help people who can't afford breast cancer medication. Something like that. So what have we done in the past? We've done a lot. Every homecoming, especially last year, was very, very difficult considering COVID. Hopefully this year, fingers crossed, we won't have the same restrictions. 
Um, like I said, Spirit Weeks, we've done food and clothing drives. Um, we've, we've worked a lot with National Honor Society to help with um, certain people's projects. Um, we did heavenly hats, read across America. Um, but just because we've done these things in the past doesn't mean that we can't do other things too. If you're interested and have an idea, all of you have my email because you're on the NPSCT system. So if you have an idea, contact me. Seriously, it's my job. So I know that... Don't mess with Mrs. Blanchard. Um, so I know that you're all going to hear a lot of different people come up today and talk about how high school is so great and how you should get involved and all these different things. And you don't have to get involved in student council if you don't want to. But every person deserves to be represented correctly. Every organization, every group, every person deserves to have some kind of representation. So my question for you is, why can't that representative be you? Why can't it be you who helps hold that door for that person? Why can't it be you who goes and puts up those decorations? Why can't it be you that helps out in homecoming? It doesn't take much to help out this community. It doesn't take much to help your community, um, your educational community. It doesn't take much to help an administrator. It doesn't take much to go into Ms. Tigno, uh, Tigno's office and say, hey, how's it going? Do you need help with anything? Any volunteer hours I can take? Something like that. So just think about that. I know that not all of you are going to want to get involved, and that's OK. But if you do, then I implore you, f communicate. Communicate with me. Communicate with the other officers. Communicate with our advisors. Communicate with the color guard, um, with field hockey. If you want to get involved in athletics, go to Mr. Mateo and Mr. Meyer's room. Say, hey, how can, I do, how can I do this? How can I sign up for football? I know it's late, but how, how do I do it? And they'll be like, yeah, it's a little bit late, but we can think of something. Get involved. Because these four, Ms. Tignon was not, or Mrs. Blanchard wasn't lying. These four years fly by very, very quickly. I should know. I've been here for those four years. It did not feel like four years. Do something. Thank you for your time. Okay. Now here's Mr. Korn. Good morning, everyone. Hi, my big mug is on there right there. I am Mr. Corn. I am the director of school counseling. So um, I also was down at the middle schools. You might have saw me around because I worked with uh, Ms. Kowarski and Mr. Murphy, who would have been your middle school counselors if you were at Newington Public Schools last year. So this is our school counseling group here at the high school. So I believe houses have already been explained to you, but in each house there are two school counselors, and school counselors are broken down by um, the alphabet. It's the first two or three letters of your last name. So you can, can kind of put the, you know, the name to the face so you find your last name. That is your school counselor. You have not gotten your schedules yet? Okay, so when you get your schedules today, um, you'll probably, you will see your school counselor at the bottom of the schedule as well. Um, school counselors will be back um, next week, but we are all in professional development next week. So um, if you have any scheduling issues, you have the first two weeks of school to make any changes. So you can contact your school counselor then. They are here to support you through your academics, anything personally or socially going on in your life and then also to focus in on career in after high school. They are your go-to people at the high school. And then the other counselor, Miss Arnett, she is not in a house, but she is our career academy counselor. So students are assigned to Miss Arnett. If you are an academy student and you designate yourself as such after your, junior, or after your sophomore year, you would move to Mrs. Arnett's caseload. So she works with all our students in the academy programs. She will, if you're in ninth and 10th grade, you will also work with her. You just won't be on her caseload directly. And then last uh, for me, the most important part. So how do you graduate from Newington High School? So this is really important. So unlike middle school and, your, and elementary school, in order to graduate from Newington High School, you have to earn this thing called credits. So some of you actually are already coming into Newington High School with credits. So if you took Algebra 1 in middle school and passed, you have one credit. If you took Spanish 
in middle school and you passed, you got one credit. And something new, you were actually, I believe, the first class to come in that you took the digital citizenship class um, online through Google, and you would have earned potentially a half credit if you passed that segment in your course. Um, that was in your computer course, I believe, um, in one of your cycles. So some of you are already coming in with two and a half credits potentially. Um, but in order to be promoted, so this is new probably for you, at the end of this year, you have to earn six credits. If you do not earn six credits, you are considered a ninth grade student still. In order to become a junior, you need to earn 12 credits. If you earn 11 and a half, or if you're at eight credits, you're considered a sophomore. And then in order to become a senior, you need 18 credits. And in order to graduate from Newington High School, you need a total of 25. I'm not going to get into all the different categories of requirements, but this is overall total what you need in order to graduate from Newington High School and also to be promoted um, from year to year. But again, it is really important that you earn credit throughout your career. Unlike in middle school and elementary school, just because it's a new year doesn't mean that you all of a sudden become a 10th grader. If you don't have the credits, you are considered a 9th grade student. Um, in a full year class, it's worth one credit, and a semester course is usually worth a half credit. So um, again, there are some more core requirements in order to meet graduation requirements, but this is how you are promoted um, for total credits. I think everyone's been introduced to the program of studies, and you can go on to the program of studies website, and on there it actually has it broken down by categories of what are the core requirements for graduation. So I think that does it for me and our nurses. Good luck, everyone. Hello everyone, we're so excited to meet all of you. Uh, we have two nurses here at the high school. I am Nurse Callie and this is Nurse Audra. Um, so our office is located on the first floor by the main office. Like Ms. Tigno said, we have an open door policy so you can always come, we're here to help um, and hopefully we can get things sorted out with whatever you need. Our door is typically closed but it's always unlocked. So it's the door with the red cross. We just like to, uh, help with privacy, whoever is in the office, but you're always welcome to come in. Um, it's not an office where you can come without a pass. You need a pass. Go to class first, get a pass, and then come to us. We do not give passes out, so if you come without a pass, you will not be getting one, and then you're late for class, which is not going to be good. Uh, let's see, what else? Medication. Oh, I didn't even hit next. Medications in school. You are not allowed to carry any medications on you, and that includes over-the-counter meds. That's Tylenol, Advil, Tums, whatever it may be, even prescription meds. You're not allowed to carry anything on you. So please be sure you bring it to the nurse's office, and all medications have to have an order. So make sure you have a doctor fill out an order, a parent or guardian, guardian signature, and bring us the order and the medication. Um, what else? Physicals. Mr. Myers already touched upon this, but if you are having a, if you're in the athletics, you need to have a physical done every year. So that comes to our office. We recommend getting two physical copies from your doctors because things happen, they get lost. So make sure you get two copies and one comes to us. Uh, 10th grade, State of Connecticut requires all sophomores to have a physical done. So call now, call your doctor, make the appointment so that you do not have a late physical for your 10th grade. You need to have one in. Um, so you will not be allowed in in 11th grade. So you call today, you make your appointment, and make sure you get a physical done for next year. What else? Let's see. Any other medical paperwork will come to our office. Uh, you can drop it off at the main office but if we're not there, but best bet is to bring it directly to us, hand it to one of us. Um, what was that? Medicaid. Well, we touched upon medications, but the only two medications you can carry on you 
our EpiPens or inhalers if you need to, but that needs to be authorized by your doctor and a parent guardian. So we need to have that conversation before it happens. And then last thing, you are in high school now for whoever gets your period. You need to be bringing your own tampons and pads. If you, in the event that you, I know, giggle, giggle, if you forget them or you're having an emergency, then they will be in the bathrooms. You do not need to come to the nurse's office to get one. So you can find them in the bathroom now, but you need to be bringing your own. I think that is it. Welcome to Newington High School. Good morning, everybody. How you doing? My name is Master Police Officer Wagner. I've been a cop over 20 years. I'm here as your school resource officer. So I'm not a security guard, I'm a police officer. So in middle school you had security guards, we still have them, but I'm also a police officer. My main purpose here is to keep you safe. And I'm gonna fight for you, I'll tell you that right now, all right? So to keep you safe is I need your help sometimes. Because we have incidents sometimes where it goes five days before someone tells somebody. And five days might be too long. So if you hear something, you gotta say something, right? Because then I can act, we, you're not, you, we can make it anonymous, whatever you want. But if some is, there's a threat to this school or anything, like there's going to be a fight, bullying, you've got to let us know. We can handle that. My office is open all the time. Uh, I, I understand some people call me the chill cop heard in the street. Well, uh, let me rephrase that. I'm, I might, you could just call it chill, it's respect and understanding. I understand where you guys are coming from. I was a freshman once, right? I grew up, I'm a human being, just because I'm in this uniform, right? In respect. I want to treat you like young adults. But with the respect, if I give you respect, I want you to give me respect back. That's all I ask, right? I'll be very respectful to you. We'll handle things out. If you have an issue, let me know. We can handle it. So last year, our, our number one arrests were fighting, vaping THC in the school, and uh, like online like Snapchat harassment. So in this school, if you do that, you, you can get arrested. That's the last thing I want to do is arrest you guys, right? I want you guys to do great in school, become great adults, and have a great life, and have fun in school. But there's certain rules you got to follow. Remember how you feel if someone picks on you? Then why are you going to do it to someone else? So remember how you felt when someone picked on you before you start bullying someone. And if someone is bullying you, come to me, come to our social workers, whoever, our assistant principals, and let them know. And then this way we can mediate it, because most of the fights that start are over really simple, silly things. And then now you're out of school, you're, you're suspended, you can be expul expulsion. Uh, it's not worth it. Most of the time you sit down and talk to that person, if you have differences, guess what? You can find a common ground and work things out, right? So settle your emotions down. If you get upset, come talk to me. I'm, you can always approach to me and talk to me anytime. Um, your counselors, system principals, anybody you want. But a lot of times when we talk those emotions out, there's, there's no fight, and you guys don't get in trouble. And that's what we want. We, we don't, I don't want to be a police officer in a school arresting you guys. I want to be a police officer in a school protecting you guys, advocating for you guys, right? So my goal is, number one, safety. And that comes to, like, opening doors for people. If someone knocks on a door, do not open that door. You don't know who that is. It might be your friend. You don't know their intentions. So you tell them to go around to the front desk. Like, you sign in. They're not going to get in trouble. Just let them sign in. Don't open doors for people, okay? So another big thing is vaping. So you have to remember, we have 100 cameras in this school. And I have all these little cameras on my, I, my desk. I can see every camera. I have every bathroom on the cameras. So not inside, but the outside, right? So privacy. So I know when a group of kids go down to a bathroom from the third floor to the north end or wherever, I kind of know what you're doing. And then security's going to go down, and principal's going to come down, assistant principal, and we're going we're to address that. So don't try to be cool and bring a vape to school and get your friends into trouble or get yourself into trouble. And a THC might be legal for 21-year-old adults, but it's not legal for you guys. And what happens when you bring THC to school is you get suspended for 10 days, you're up for expulsion. And you can miss a quarter of your, your school year. So if you want to hang out with your friends, have a good time, don't do those things. It's simple. There's simple things you can do, that, and you can have a great time in school. 
And you can get kicked off of sports, clubs, everything like that. So come to school. Remember, my door's always open. I'm here for your safety. I'll take care of you guys, anything you need, all right? And I treat everybody equal, and I will, I'll make time for anybody, okay? Thank you, Officer Wagner. Good morning, everybody. Uh, again, I'm Mr. Ficacelli, the Dornhouse principal. So if your uh, last name's in the middle of the alphabet, you'll be a Dornhouse student, and I'll be your assistant principal. Um, I have a few quick things to go over. The, the slides I'm going to show you right now, you'll actually see again in the classroom. Uh, so if you have any questions, the teachers in your class will be able to answer it. It's mostly about our schedule coming up, okay? Um, if there's one takeaway you take, uh, you take from today, um, as outlined by Evan, our student leaders, you have a lot of opportunities here the next four years at the high school. Please take advantage of them, all right? Um, you have a lot of people, teachers, uh, resources here to help you out. Uh, so please, if you need anything, reach out to any of us. Okay, a couple of quick things. If you are dropped off by the bus, uh, you will be dropped off for the main entrance. If you are dropped off by a parent, guardian, um, or anyone else, you'll be dropped off by the event center. That's the entrance right over here, all right? In the morning, we only have those two entrances um, manned and opened. So those are the two ways that you would come into the school in the morning. All right, our schedule. Let's start off, look at the week schedule. I don't know if you guys have already seen this. You'll see this again in the classroom. So if you have any questions, your teachers will be able to, uh, to answer it for you. But basically, it's a modified block schedule. We have A, B, and C days, all right? Those are just straight eight. You have all eight periods. Um, and then we have our O and E block days, okay? On O days, you have your odd periods, so one, three, five, seven. And on E days, you have your even periods. All right, on those days, you also have a 30-minute advisory um, with your advisory teacher, which you'll be with your advisory for all four years. Um, so you get pretty tight with that teacher and those students in that class. The first two days of school, we have a, a uh, special schedule where both days you'll go to your advisory to start the day, all right? And you'll be there for about, about an hour, all right, to go over a few different things um, and get to know your advisory. All right, the lunch schedule. So on A, B, C days, all you really need to know here, okay, is if you have a lunch, you would go straight to lunch, okay? There's three different lunch periods. You'd go straight to lunch, then you'd go to class. If you have B lunch, you'd go to class, then you'd go to lunch, then you'd go back to class. If you have C lunch, you'd go to class first, and then you'd go to lunch at the end of the period, all right? I know this is a lot. When you look at it again in the classroom, if you have any specific questions for your teacher, uh, they could answer it for you. All right. With that, I'm going to hand it off to the McGee House Assistant Principal, Mr. Harris. Hi, everybody. How are we today? It's hard when we have to sit this long and listen, and thank you guys for, for doing that, though. You ready? So, guys, everybody who is a freshman will be placed in a freshman study, okay? At the end of the year, if you meet the criteria, you could go into open study, and if you don't meet the criteria, you will move into a structured study. Okay, what that criteria is, is that you have to have uh, no more than uh, two or more grades below a C minus. You cannot have three or more disciplinary consequences, and you can't owe the school $20 or more. You're going to learn more about that as the year goes on, and you're going to see more about that later on, so I'm not going to belabor the point. Lockers. So we do use our lockers here at the high school to keep our backpack and to keep our jackets in, okay? So uh, at no point should anybody be walking around with a backpack. It needs to be in your locker. Certain size bags are allowed. And uh, athletes will be able to leave their equipment in the locker room. That's it. That's all for me. Thanks very much. <laughs> Mrs. Blanchard.
All right, safety violations. Officer Wagner kind of touched upon this with opening external doors and entering the building through any door other than the main entrance. This is a big one. We need to make sure that everyone in Newington High School is safe, so we don't want kids opening or staff opening external doors and letting anyone in. This goes for non-arrival times during the day. So if you were to let someone in from any exterior door or enter the building from any exterior door at any point during the school day that's not arrival and that door was not the main entrance, your first offense would be a two-hour Saturday detention. The second time, if it were to happen again, you would get a four-hour Saturday. And the third time would be an in-school suspension. It's not even going to come to that because this is your warning, right? So it's not going to be, oh, I didn't know the rule. They were my friend. I let them in. Do not open any door for anyone. The image on the right, those signs will be on the doors this year. Just as a visual reminder, you're to not open this door to let anyone in. Even if it's a teacher, they have their lanyard on, they, they have to go through the main entrance. Dress code. In the packets that you guys will be receiving in the classrooms, there's the full detailed dress code. The big things to remember here at the high school, all clothing needs to be opaque. What does opaque mean? Not see-through. Shirts must have straps. Non-religious head coverings without brims that expose your face and ears can be worn. So for example, beanies, head wraps, do-rags, those are all fine. You can wear those when you come to Newington High School. Fitted hats, fedoras, a hat like that one in the picture, cowboy hats, anything with a brim, you cannot wear when you are inside Newington High School. And that's for safety reasons, guys. It's so we're able to identify kids in the hallway if we need to look at camera footage, it's so we can identify kids. If you have any questions or you're wondering anything, reach out to any one of your house principals. We can help answer questions about the dress code. Continuing, no hoods during the school day. Again, this is to help with identification of students if we needed to look on camera for anything. And then your clothing. It must be free of profanity, violent images, sexually suggestive phrases or images, gang-related symbols, alcohol or drugs, or advertises for those products. If you are sent to your house office because your clothing is in question of one of those things, you may be asked to change. We have t-shirts available, things like that. You may be asked to call home and get a change of clothes. I've had kids reach out to friends and get hoodies or zip-ups, things like that. If you refuse to change your clothing, your parent or guardian will be contacted and you will be sent home and that will count as an out of school suspension. Don't let that happen. It's a really silly reason to get an out of school suspension. So when you're getting ready in the morning, maybe you're on TikTok doing your fit check, I don't know if that's even a thing anymore. Is that still a thing? The fit check, maybe? Ask yourself, just ask yourself this. When you're looking at yourself in the mirror, is what I am wearing going to get me sent to my house office? If the answer is yes, just make a simple change. That's it. Cell phones and electronic devices. So this is AirPods, headphones, anything of that nature. They cannot be used in the classrooms unless you have expressed permission by a teacher. So what does express permission mean? Let's say Mrs. Narowski is my English 9 teacher. And she says, Mrs. Blanchard, you can use your cell phone. Because maybe I finished all my work and I've earned that. Then I have expressed permission. My teacher allowed me to go on my device. And sometimes that happens in the classrooms. Teachers will let kids listen to music. That is expressed permission as long as your teacher says it to you. If they do not give you express permission and you have your phone out, you will be asked to turn your phone over to the teacher. The phone will then be sent to your house office 
and a parent or guardian will be contacted to pick up that device. If it happens more than once, there's additional consequences like office detentions and Saturday detentions that you might receive. Even if you take that phone out and you're like, oh, I was just checking the time real quick, it doesn't matter. Anytime a teacher asks for your electronic device, and it might be your AirPods, so those should be away also when you walk into class, and you, you are expected to turn it over to the teacher. If you refuse, and this is a big one, guys. If you say, no, I'm not giving you my phone, not doing it, you're going to be sent to the main office immediately. One of the four administrators will be called down to the office. So it might be me, it could be Mr. Harris, Mr. Ficicelli, or Ms. Tigno. And your parent or guardian will be contacted. We will be asking for your device. If you refuse to give us your device, you're going home for the day on an out-of-school suspension. When you give us your device, because that's what every single one of you are going to do if you're ever in this situation, you'll also receive an additional consequence of a Saturday detention for initially refusing to turn over your device to the teacher. Don't let it get to that point, guys. It's a silly reason to miss class. It's a silly reason to be down in the main office having to deal with one of the four administrators. Always, always, always turn your phone over to your teacher when they ask for it. And hopefully it shouldn't even get to that point because your phones and your AirPods will be out of sight, out of mind at the start of class. Now I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Tigno. All right, I didn't know I was on again. Hello again, we're almost to the end here. How are we feeling? Good, you ready to stretch in a minute? All right, see something, hear something, say something. Something you haven't heard for the first time, correct? Something we're all gonna make a promise to do, right here, right now. Got it? All right, I hear you. So every student has the, we, we say every student has the right to enter this building and have a good day. If you're entering from the buses, you'll see the four of us and um, SRO Wagner out there every morning greeting you. If you enter from the student entrance, you'll see uh, some students out there, some staff welcome you as well. I spoke earlier about two things, or one thing that's going to be around. It's also, there'll be a QR code eventually, and um, it's also online called our safe form. So if for some reason you hear or see, see something that you're not comfortable saying, I'm the one that's reporting it, you can report it anonymously. All we ask for is details because it's no help to say somebody on the third floor on Friday. We need details, obviously. So, oh, it's right here. Here's our safe form. There's one on every floor. There's a form right in the file right there. You grab the form, fill it out, and put it in the safe box, and we'll, we pick them up periodically throughout the day. And again, it, there's the form online. We're hoping for a great year. We're hoping for no incidents. We had 3,000 referrals last year. Is that what we had, APs? Something insane. We don't want you in our offices, unless we're talking about what a great day we're having. 3,000, yep. Something like that. Maybe I'm exaggerating. I thought it was something like that. All right, so next up, DECA. And this will be the end of the formal presentation before Ms. Blanchard tells you where you're heading up. And Maya from DECA, welcome. Hi, um, my name is Maya Galicio. Oh, sorry. Oh, hello. Thank you. Um, my name is Maya Galicio. I'm the vice president of DECA. I've been a member since freshman year, and I'm going to be a junior. So a lot of people always ask what DECA stands for, and it stands for Distributive Education Clubs of America, so it's not just business. DECA prepares students for futures in finance, advertising, marketing, hospitality, and everything of the sort. So if you are interested in a career of that sort, DECA is definitely the right club for you. 
But also, if you're not interested in business and you just want to get involved in the school, DECA is still a great option for you. In the school, mostly we work at the school store, but students also have the opportunity to compete. So when you compete, you get to do the state competition. And then if you place in the state competition, you can go to the international competition. So last year, I placed second, and I was able to go to Atlanta, Georgia for ICDC. And at that competition, it was a great experience, and it prepares you for the real world because you learn to talk to judges, you have to learn how to dress professionally and present yourself, and you're also not at home with your parents. You're in a new state with a teacher, yes, but you're meeting new people from all around the country, and that's a great experience. And you're learning a lot of real life problems. You're learning how to solve real life problems and how to be out of town. So in Atlanta, Georgia, not only did we compete, but we got to go mini golfing. We went to Six Flags. We went to the world of Coca-Cola and all of that. It was actually very fun. And I met a lot of friends in Georgia, which was very cool. People from Tennessee and all around the country. We even met people from out of country. So in school, you can do things such as community service, which looks very great on college resumes. You could do the pumpkin decorating competition, and you can listen to guest speakers. So other trips include the sports and entertainment marketing trip to Orlando, Florida. You can go on that. Or you can go on the power trip to Washington, D.C. So if you want to get involved in something in school, DECA is a great club. I've been doing it for a long time, and all of us are in DECA. So I think that it's really a great experience. You get to learn skills, and it prepares you for many jobs, not just business-related jobs. So if you want to get ready for theme days, you can go to the school store and buy spirit merch. Our first spirit day is red, white, and blue day. And is, does, anybody, does anybody want some merch? These are all the things you can do. Does anyone want to get merch? I don't know. I don't think you guys are loud enough. Not loud enough. All right. Raise your hands. No fighting. So now that you got your merch, you can see what you can get at the school store. And also make sure you join DECA. There's different links all around the school. DECA is a great club to get involved in. Thank you. All right, guys, let's settle back down. Thank you, DECA. We're almost done, guys. I know you want to get into your groups, get your schedules, but I'm going to wait for you. I can stand here for a long time. All right. So we have one more group that is going to speak. I just wanted to personally say thank you to this group. Um, it is our stage crew and broadcasting group. Round of applause for stage crew and broadcasting. So components from the presentation today will be put onto YouTube. Um, so if there's any piece that you want to watch again, if you have friends that aren't here, um, you will be able to access the presentation today at a later date. So families will get emailed when that link comes out. I'm going to turn it over to our stage crew and broadcasting group now just to quickly talk about what stage crew and broadcasting is all about. 
Um, and then we will get right into our group. So hang tight, guys. We're almost there. All right, I am the last group, so I hope I still have your attention. Can I get a good morning if you're paying attention to me? Come on, come on. I see some faces I know. Thank you. All right, so I'm here to talk a little bit about Stage Crew. I am going into my senior year. This is my fourth year in Stage Crew. It has become like a second family to me. We do a, a wide variety of things. So personally, I do lighting. There's a lot of lighting and sound to do. You can work with microphones. You can work with spotlights. Um, raise your hand if you're interested in anything audiovisual. What if you want to join Crew? Raise your hand, Ian. <laughs> All right, I see you. Okay, so another thing we do is we build the sets. We make them structurally safe so that the actors can walk on them, they can act on them. So we do a lot with building, we do a lot with power tools. So if something, if you're built, wow, I can talk. If building is something you're interested in, you can join us. And the other thing is painting. So I'm sure there are some artists in here, if you enjoy painting, if you enjoy painting, you don't need to have any skill. You don't need to have any past experience. We'll teach you on the spot. It's really fun, and we're a very inclusive group, so I recommend you join us. We don't have a date for our first meeting yet, but if you are interested, you can email Jacob Trowbridge. His email is right there. You can follow our Instagram accounts, or you can text our remind. The code is going to be NHSTGCREW, C-R-E-W. And I am going to be talking about our broadcasting program. I am going into my junior year. And so with broadcasting, we stream all of our sports games, concerts, and similar events. The photo you can see up there, we went and streamed one of our games at the Dunkin' Donuts Stadium in Hartford. We also streamed the girls basketball game that was at Mohegan Sun. So we do a lot of stuff more than ju sorry, just in the high school. We also expand out and yeah, it's a really great program. It's a lot of similar people to in stage crew. A lot of us do both. We also do morning announcements. So every advisory, or almost every advisory, we go down, we have a whole studio, the, and we run the announcements for student council to be able to say the announcements. So if you are interested in broadcasting, you can go ahead and email that same email. You're going to email Jacob Trowbridge, and uh, again, another shameless plug, go ahead and follow our Instagrams. <laughs> 